Good morning, church. It is wonderful to be with you, as always, sharing the Word of God this morning. Uh, I don't know about you, but the end of the year has really snuck up on me, uh, and what a year it has been, for better or worse. Uh, Steve and I really wanted to take a moment this morning and thank you uh, for the support that you have all shown us uh, as we have just negotiated the challenges of this year. Uh, we deeply love, value and appreciate each and every one of you. Uh, we really want to thank you from the bottom of our hearts for your commitment to us, your commitment to each other and your commitment to C3 grow. You guys are our heroes. We love you so much and yeah, we're so thankful for you. Well, this morning we are beginning our Christmas sermon series now. Yes, I love Christmas and I'm sure that you do too. What is not to love? Uh, our Christmas theme this year is called Prince of Peace. I love that. And of course, it's taken from a really well-known Christmas scripture in Isaiah 9. For to us, a child is born. To us, a son is given. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. And his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor. Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace, there will be no end. Doesn't that just capture the hope and the peace that we need in the midst of these turbulent times? Our world needs a wonderful counsellor, a mighty God, a Prince of Peace. We need a wonderful counsellor a mighty God and a Prince of Peace. And Christmas is the time when we proclaim to the world that the one that we need, the one that the world needs, has indeed already come. He is here. Praise God, our beautiful Prince of Peace. He has come. And so in the coming weeks, Laura and Steve will be preaching from this passage in Isaiah 9 for you. So I don't want to steal any of their content this morning. I'm going to be opening with a prophecy from Isaiah 7, 14, and then look at how it's been fulfilled. It seemed fitting to me to begin our Christmas series looking at how miraculous Jesus' beginning on earth was. The word that became flesh and contemplating just how perfectly planned and executed it all was. For me, I always feel the peace of God when I take the time to reflect on God's sovereignty, on his grace, on his love. And I think each of those things, God's sovereignty, his grace, his love, is really highlighted in the beautiful fulfillment of this prophecy. Jesus coming to earth as our atonement. Isaiah 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself will give you a sign Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. In the Old Testament, God promised he would send a Messiah to save his people from their sins. In fact, the grand purpose of the entire Old Testament is to set the scene for the Messiah. One of the ways the Old Testament does this is through prophecy. There are numerous prophecies given throughout the Old Testament that point to the promised Messiah, so that God's people would recognize him when he came. Luke 1, 26 to 35, gives an account of this prophecy being fulfilled. It reads, In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God to a city of Galilee named Nazareth, to a virgin betrothed to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, O favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was greatly troubled at the saying and tried to discern what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And behold, you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give to him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever, 
and of his kingdom there will be no end. And Mary said to the angel, How will this be, since I am a virgin? And the angel answered her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child will be born, will be called Holy, the Son of God. Putting ourselves in Mary's shoes for a moment, we can imagine how completely overwhelming this situation could be. Amazingly, Mary chooses faith, not fear. And it would also be terrifying for her fiance, Joseph, not just for her. Thankfully though, God, in his gracious ways, he sent an angel uh, to reassure Joseph <laughs> that what Mary was saying was mercifully, miraculously true, thank goodness. Uh, the account of this is in Matthew 1, 18 to 20. Now the birth of Jesus took place in this way. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be with child with the Holy Spirit. And her husband Joseph, being just a man, and being a just man and unwilling to put her to shame, resolved to divorce her quietly. But as he considered these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream, saying, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary as your wife, for that which is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had spoken by the prophet, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which means God with us. Just amazing. So, Jesus was the name that Joseph was told to give the child by the angel of the Lord, because it means saviour. Christ was the title that referred to the long-awaited King of the Jews who would give victory over sin to the people and bear the government of the world on his shoulders. This Jesus was the long-awaited Christ. This is what Christmas is all about. The long-awaited arrival of Jesus Christ, Saviour and King. He is the Word that became flesh. Now, let's turn to another classic Christmas text in John 1. This is our main text for today. Turn there in your Bibles now. I'm going to be reading from verses 1 to 14. It's a fair-sized chunk, but we will work our way through it in smaller sections at a time. John 1, 1 to 14. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which gives light to everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory. Glory is the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. What a great Christmas passage. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. This is what Christmas is all about. God coming into the world. God in flesh. Jesus Christ, full of grace and truth. This passage is full of truths about Jesus that I want to share with you this morning. 
Let me pray for you before we unpack these. God, I pray for every person who is listening this morning. God, that your truths would seep into our hearts, into our minds, into our souls, and that they would bring peace this morning. God, thank you that your peace surpasses all understanding. And I pray, Lord, that your peace would guard our hearts and our minds through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. So as we begin our Christmas look at our incarnate King, our Prince of Peace, let's look closely at these truths that we can pull out from this passage about the Word that became flesh. We'll start at the beginning, John 1, 1 to 2. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. This teaches us that the one we know as Jesus Christ, the Saviour King, the wonderful Counselor, our Prince of Peace, before he was made flesh, before he was born in that lowly manger, he was God and he was with God. He has eternally existed as one of three distinct, coexistent, co-eternal persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Jesus was not an afterthought. He was not a plan B. He has eternally existed and will forevermore. Continuing on, John 1 verse 3. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. One reason John writes this is to emphasize that Jesus is God. When we think of God, we immediately think of the Creator. God is the origin and the source and the explanation for everything that exists. So when John says all things were made through him and without him, not anything made that was made, he is saying that Jesus is God, the Creator. He was not created. Take a moment now just to allow God's peace to fill your heart as you reflect on how amazing, majestic and powerful our Saviour is. We know the Creator of all. He is our God, our Saviour, our friend, the Creator of all who was there at the beginning and will be there forevermore. Reminding myself of these things and reflecting on them always brings me peace. The next verse has something else for us to consider this morning too. John 1, 4 to 5. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The word that became flesh has life. That life becomes the light of men. That light overcomes darkness and it cannot be overcome. Praise God. Jesus is life and light. Without Jesus, we are all spiritually dead and spiritually blind. But John is saying here that Jesus is the remedy to both of these problems faced by all of humanity. He has the life that we need to live and that life becomes the light that we need to see. Nothing can overcome his life and light. I pray this morning that Jesus is your source of life and light, your source of peace. So what we know so far about the word that became flesh, he is the fulfillment of all old prophecy, Old Testament prophecy about the coming Messiah. He is Jesus Christ, Saviour and King. He is God, the second person of the Trinity. He is eternal. He is the creator of all things. He is our life and light. Finally, this morning, there are two ways that people can respond to the word that became flesh. One response, I do not know him and I do not receive him. John 1, 10 to 11. He was in the world, 
and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. This verse points out just how blind the world is, that even when the Creator himself appeared, the world did not recognize him. This is a deeply tragic response. But there's another response, a hope-filled response. I know him and I receive him. John 1, 12 to 13. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. This is the way I pray you would respond to Jesus this Christmas. Receive him as saviour and as king, and as the word that became flesh, as the creator, as life, as light. How much peace is there to be found in him? Peace that surpasses all understanding. And of course, in closing, John 1, 14. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we have seen his glory. Glory as of the only son from the father, full of grace and truth. His grace and truth are enough for us. His grace and truth are enough for you. Allow his grace and truth to saturate your heart and your mind this morning. His grace is sufficient for you. Christmas is all about God coming into the world and calling out to everyone who would hear, come out of your darkness, walk in my light, walk in my life. I died on the cross for your sins that my righteousness would be your righteousness. All you need to do to receive me is believe, believe in me, ask forgiveness and have eternal life with me. God is offering you peace this morning, peace this Christmas. Perhaps these past few months have upended your peace. God's peace is still here, it's on offer each and every day, his mercies are new. Can I encourage you this morning Reach out to God afresh and accept the peace that he is offering. Rest in the knowledge that he is sovereign. He has already won and overcome death. He has gifted you eternal life. We have nothing to fear. In all of these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. What a beautiful Prince of Peace we serve. God bless you, church.